Hello YouTube, Michael here, Novice Wild Camper, welcome to my channel, thanks for clicking on the video. I'm out on Dartmoor again today, for a change. I'm a bit later than I wanted to be, I got stuck, couldn't get over it as early so I missed the sunset. It was such a beautiful evening, um, would have made for a great time lapse, but uh, them's the breaks. I haven't really got time to stop and film anything until I uh, get pitched up. So uh, I'm heading up to uh, Brat Tour, which I've been to before. I'm going past there um, over Arms Tour, I think it is, and then on to Great Links Tour. <coughs> Daylight allowing, that was my plan. So it depends how long it takes to get there. So uh, it's about an hour's walk. Sun has just gone down. As I say, beautiful scenery, beautiful evening. But I miss the sunset. Fingers crossed it'll be one in the morning. It's showing clear all night. Not too cold, down to about four degrees. Not much wind, apparently. We shall see. Catch up with you in a minute. I'm so unfit. I'm just up uh, Brat Tours over that way. Arms Tour. There behind me. Nowhere near Great Links yet. My legs are killing me. And I'm out of breath. So, it's getting dark now, so I might try and find somewhere at the top of my Arms Tour. See if I can find a spot there. Not quite where I wanted to be, but time frames are uh, not going to allow it, I don't think. to uh, Great Stake Tour or Arms Tour because um, I couldn't get to it. It was just thick bog all the way up. Left, right, straight on. It was just bog everywhere, nightmare. So I'm up at Widgery Cross. And if you can see it behind me, silhouetted in the moon. Um, so yeah, sort of brat tour. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna find somewhere around here and camp up. It's too dark to keep walking. It's gonna be a bit dangerous. It's very boggy and very treacherous. And I've brought my head torch this time. So I could use that, but um, not too tired. I can't bother. Right, let's find somewhere. You know, sometimes you think, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have come out for a camp tonight. This is starting to become one of those nights. Probably because it was a last minute plan. But um, yes, yeah, so I didn't get to um, Great Staple Tour and didn't get to Arms Tour. And I got to uh, Widgery Cross, <laughs> so I'm camped up here. And um, I brought two litres of water in my um, old um, Sawyer filter bag. And normally I would fill up on the way, but the only river is just after the car park, so it's a bit pointless filling up with river water and then walking all the way to camp. So I filled it from home and uh, I packed it in the back of my bag. Um, <clears throat> just to be on the safe side, I put it inside a, another plastic bag, so like a bag liner, like a pack liner. 
And obviously in my rucksack I keep my sleeping bag inside a dry sack um, as well as anything else of any value. And I got here, took my pack off, started pitching the tent up and then as I started taking everything out of my bag I realised it was full of water. So the water had somehow leaked out of the bag, out of the, the pack liner, through the back of the, back sa uh, the uh, rucksack and into the bag and my sleeping bag was soaked or at least the dry sack was took it out and uh, luckily it, it did its job so I have a dry sleeping bag uh, my pillow was drenched though because that wasn't in a dry sack so I've had that hanging like a flag on one of my poles speaking of which I haven't got my carbon fiber pole I remember to bring it but I don't remember seeing it so I haven't forgotten it but I it's normally in my pack but I can't find the pole mushroom that goes on the top that I put up there to protect the tent and I don't want to put a bare pole up there because it's going to rip it. So um, I've used one of the tracking poles that I use on the ends to give me a bit more, uh, <coughs> excuse me, to give me a bit more length uh, in the tent. Um, so I just use one of the trekking poles and um, I've put a carbon pole outside as my flag pole, drying my, uh, my pillow, which is now dry. And there's some done quite a good job in the wind. So, uh, so yeah, a few things are going, going awry, but uh, I'm here now, I missed the sunset, which is annoying. Um, tried to do a time lapse of setting up the tent on a night lapse, but I don't think that's worked either. This camera's bugging me. Um, spent ages just trying to get it to record this section. So anyway, I'm going to get a coffee on. It is nearly half past six, and that is late for my first coffee. Um, there's some firing going off in the background. I know we're not a million miles away from the ranges and there is firing tonight uh, and during the day, so I can hear them in the background, but um, I think we should be safe. Um, one of the things I'm going to test is this lamp. Now, the Fluxtail Gear Pro 2. Um, I've got it on the lowest light setting. Or have I? No, I lie, I haven't. Right. That's the lowest light setting, which isn't great. Just to see how long it lasts, because it didn't seem to last very well. A couple of other people have said the same thing, so it's great at pumping up the the, uh, the mat you know, in 20 seconds, but um, if it doesn't last as a light for more than a couple of hours, then that's pretty useless. My gold lighthouse zero does really, really well. It seems to last all night long and in the morning. So I might do a, a, a review test and just compare them. Just stick them side by side and leave them running see how they work um, because yeah blowing up a mat I can do that by mouth it's a bit annoying but then I've got a light all night long what I don't want is to have a quick quick uh, pump for blowing the mat up and then no light all night long so we shall see right I'm gonna get a kettle on and get a coffee <coughs> right so the temperature is only supposed to be about four five degrees tonight but um, it feels a lot colder let's have a coffee and I'm gonna get some food on well, it's a bit different tonight. So I've got um, Ben's original egg fried rice and some um, sweet chili chicken slices. So I'm getting them cooked up in my uh, little pot because I'm getting hungry. And then I think I'll uh, crack the JD out. Bring you back in a bit. That's quite tasty. Quite a bit as well. <clears throat> Works quite well with chicken. I have managed to weld the rice at the bottom of the pot though. Which is what happened when I had beans and sausages in here before. Hopefully I'll be able to recover it so I can have coffee in the, in the morning. Otherwise I won't be happy. Right, well, uh, it's about a quarter to eleven, been a quiet evening. Tried some night lapse photography and night shots, but didn't really work that well. Not sure I'm gonna have a play with this camera, see if I can get it sorted. The lights lasted. So um, I've had it on its lowest setting and it's been on for probably I don't know, four hours, maybe five, and doesn't seem to have changed at all. So I think maybe it was just because I had it on full power setting before. 
um, doesn't seem to last that long, but uh, we shall see. I'll do a test with it against the um, the Lighthouse Goal Zero and see how it goes from there. Anyway, if nothing else happens, I'll see you guys in the morning. too bad. Very calm last night, very quiet, no wind, no rain. Um, got down pretty cold but I was very very warm so I was alright. Um, I'm going to have to get up for my morning ablutions and get a coffee in as well. So I'll see you in a bit. So were any regular viewers of my channel, yes, I'm talking to you two, um, might remember a video I did a little while back of the Lanshan one in high winds where the ram's hook clip broke, 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 the word is broke, and I replaced the, uh, the clip with two little carabiners, metal carabiners, which work really well. However, the perfect solution is the metal Ram's hook clip from Z Packs. Problem is, these are like four dollars, pretty cheap from the States. They cost thirty dollars to uh, import, which is ridiculous. So, I just want to give a shout out to a chap called Dave from a channel called uh, Everyone Knows a Dave. Uh, he's an English guy, lives out in the States, does loads of videos, goes to some fantastic places. So, um, I'll put a link in his. Uh, of his channel in my description below. Pop over and, and have a look and uh, give him a shout, say hello and give him a sub. But lovely guy, he got me three of these, travelled over to the UK and posted them from England just to save import taxes. Now, I think he was coming over for a holiday at Christmas time and uh, bless him, he got me three of these because obviously they're cheap in the States and, um, and sent me them. Didn't need to give me three. I did ask him why. Um, which was very nice of him, but uh, he basically said, knowing you, you're probably going to get a Lanshan too, so you'll need another two of them, which uh, mm, it's a possibility, maybe a pro. <laughs> we shall see. So anyway, thanks Dave. Much appreciated. These worked well last night, not a, not a, not a single bit of wind last night, but uh, I'm sure they will see me in good stead in the future. So thanks for that. Okay, so here's where I camped last night. Leave no trace. It's just a flat, wet, wet patch of grass. Beautiful spot, absolutely stunning. Views for miles and a beautiful morning. Right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Uh, but any comments, leave them in the section below. I always get back to people. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks a lot.